In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Today's Chaplain's Report does come from the book of Jonah. And just to give you a little bit of context, I'm sure most of us are familiar with the book of Jonah, but just to give you the long and short of it, the way that this book starts out is that Jonah hears a call from God to go and preach to the people of Nineveh. They have been very wicked, and God wants Jonah to bring his word to Nineveh to tell them to stop and to change their ways. Jonah is not real thrilled about this because he's a Jew, and the Jews don't like the Ninevites. In fact, the Ninevites have been the ones that have been persecuting his people, and because of that, Jonah says, nope, not going to do it, so he takes a cruise in the opposite direction. When he sails off to Tarshish, which is uh, his destination at, at this point, he's trying to get as far away from Nineveh as possible, which I've always found kind of hilarious. God, uh, Jonah, who is a prophet and is supposed to be a man of God and is supposed to know better, is like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just run away from God. That'll work out real well for me. I mean, yes, I know, looking back at Bible characters, it's easy for us to waggle our fingers when we have the, the ability to look at it hindsight, but I don't know. With that one, I kind of look at that, I'm like, okay, even in the moment, Jonah should have known better than that, that God was just going to let him go, that it was just there was going to be no repercussion for that on this side of eternity or the next. Uh, I think that uh, we all know the rest of the story and how that goes out, but I want to focus on a very specific part of this story. And actually, I want to kind of focus on not Jonah. I want to focus on a few other characters in this story as we look at Jonah 1. And in this particular episode, what has just happened is Jonah has fled from God, and now a storm has kicked up in the ship that he has taken trying to get as far away from Nineveh as possible. And, and now that this storm is raging, these sailors have been trying to right the ship. They, they're trying to go through this storm, and it is not working, and they have cast lots to try to figure out, okay, this is an unnatural storm. Uh, somebody is is obviously angered somebody up there, and so what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out what is going on, and June, Jonah actually gives them the answer and tells them what is going on in this particular passage. This is Jonah 1, 12 through 13. He, talking about Jonah, he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you, for I know that on account of me this great storm has come up upon you. However, the men rode desperately to return to land, but they could not, for the sea was becoming even stormier against them. So, when you look at the reaction of the sailors, I find this whole exchange fascinating because these sailors were not Hebrews. That, that is made very clear in the account by Jonah. In fact, he was trying to get away from the Israelites, away from the Hebrew people to try to hide himself from God, which is the whole reason he's on this ship that is being manned by pagans. And that's why he has to tell them that he's a Hebrew. So these are men that are not well-versed in the law at all, probably never even heard of Jonah's God. And yet they find themselves right in the middle of this dispute between Jonah and his God who told him to do something and Jonah acted in direct defiance to that. This is really an interesting story about obedience to God because you'll notice that Jonah gives them instructions. He says, okay, this is how to fix it. This will solve your problem. Now, it's not a solution that Jonah really likes, I'm sure, but at least he does have the courage and honesty to say, yep, if you throw me into the ocean, you throw me overboard, that's going to solve this storm right now. Now, the sailors, these were not timid men. These were not rookie sailors. I mean, the, the reason that they're on this ship, presumably, based on everything we know from the passage, is that these are probably guys that did this for a living every single day, at least most of them. And despite this, they're seeing this storm that they have never seen anything like this before. And they hear that and they're like, okay, 
but we really don't want Jonah to die. So what we're going to do is we're going to gather up and, and the Bible says, row desperately. Jonah tells them the solution and say, you know, we've got a better idea because we want to keep you safe. We don't want to just throw a guy into the ocean. So what we're going to do is we're going to just row and get out of the storm. That does not go well for them. In fact, the, uh, they, they tried to return to land, but they obviously can't, and it says that the storm gets even worse. And I think that that is such a great story for us to take into account, because they knew the command of God. They had the message. Jonah had already done his part and delivered to them what they were supposed to do, and they said, we don't like that plan. We're going to come up with our own. Maybe we can fix it doing it our way. You see, that is an attitude that ensnares so many people. Because they look at one of God's commands and they think, oh, that doesn't really make sense to us, or no, that just seems too cruel, or whatever else it may be, and they say, here's, here's our plan, we like this way better, we're going to try this. And it doesn't work. And it never does. You can never get by with God doing things your own way. Now, God does want us to be wise. He wants us to think. He wants us to come up with our own solutions whenever we can. But when he gives us a direct order, he expects obedience. And this is exactly what happened in this particular episode. God gave them the instructions, and they didn't listen. And they tried doing it their way, and things only got worse. I mean, that's a great metaphor for the way that most people live their lives. They hear God's command and they think, ah, it's pretty good, but we're going to come up with our own and we'll try doing it this way and see how that works out for us. And spoiler alert, it never does. Now, I want you to consider all the things that we know about these sailors. First of all, we know that they were competent. It wasn't that they were bad rowers. It wasn't that they weren't strong. I mean, they knew what they were doing. They had been through storms before. Heck, this plan probably had worked at times before when Jonah wasn't there and it was just a normal, natural storm. That had probably been something that had served them in the past for a different situation when God had not given them a direct command. And we could also note that there's a lot of good intention here. I mean, they hear God's command and say, well, we don't want Jonah to die. And they don't even know this guy. They have enough compassion that they look at Jonah and say, we don't want him to perish, and so we're going to try it this way first. You got to admire that. I mean, it wasn't the best course of action, but at least their heart's in the right place. At least they're trying to do the right thing. You have to look at that and say, okay, well, you know, at least their heart was in the right place, but that really comes to the point of the lesson. It doesn't matter how many people agree with it. It doesn't matter what the intention was or how good the intention was. It doesn't matter how smart the people are or how competent they are. Ultimately, when it comes down to it, you have man's way and you have God's way. And man's way doesn't work. The only way that you can do it, especially when God has given you a direct order, is God's way. Sometimes it doesn't always make perfect sense to us. I mean, for goodness sake, I study the Bible all the time, and there's still passages where I'm kind of scratching my head and thinking, I'm not sure I understand what God was going for with that one. Or I don't understand why God did it this way when I would have done it this way. But ultimately, that's where faith comes in. You have to trust that God knows better than you, that he can see angles that you can't, and because you trust in his knowledge and his wisdom, you defer to that. You fall into his arms. You say, Lord, I don't understand it right now, but I trust you, and you've got a pretty good track record, so I'm going to go with you. Sometimes that is the best way to handle things because we have to understand that our knowledge and our wisdom is finite. Humbling yourself and falling into the arms of a trusting God through loving obedience that is always a path to success. Now again, I don't want to waggle my finger at these guys because I know how the story of Jonah pans out. They didn't. They didn't know that God was going to keep Jonah safe. But if they had had 
enough faith in God to begin with, they would have trusted that whatever happened to Jonah, God was going to make it right. And we know that eventually he did, and he's going to do the same thing for our lives. That if we just follow the commands of God, we may not always understand exactly why he's telling us to do things this way or that way there in the moment. But eventually, even when it seems counterintuitive to our human understanding at the time, God is going to make it work out for us. God's plan always works. Stay the course, friends. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.